one of the things, certainly with Genghis Khan, because hardly anyone knows anything about Genghis Khan. I mean, they know he's, you know, he was a destroyer. Um, and that's about, sometimes that's about it. That's all, that he was a bad man who lived 700 years ago. Um, so yes, I hope so. He has an interesting story, and not many people seem to know that he was abandoned and left to die with six other children and his mother, turned away from their tribe. His father had been murdered, and he was, I mean, I've been there. It was minus 40 degrees, uh, sorry, minus 20 degrees when I was there, and it was, you know, it was a killing place. Um, yet they survived, and he went on to unite his country, and his grandson was the emperor of China, and that's an incredible story. Um, do you have the phrase rags to riches? When you start with nothing and end up with everything? I mean, th those stories are impressive. So I, I hope people have learned something a bit about Genghis Khan, but my mother always said that people haven't evolved in 2,000 years. Which she was talking about Julius Caesar. You know, Cleopatra and Julius Caesar were Brutus. They could be walking down the street outside. They, we were no different uh, to them. They, they weren't any, they certainly weren't taller. Uh, they weren't more intelligent or more able than the people you'll see around you, but they, they were in extraordinary circumstances and, uh, and, and had extraordinary things happen to them. So that makes, you know, they're good stories, but they're good stories about people just like us. Um, I mean, I've always been keen not to, not to play with the idea of a superman or a superwoman. I mean, the, these people sometimes do exist, but they're fairly rare. The people who are, you know, any one of us can show extraordinary courage, for example, um, or give our lives for something more important than us. And I think, uh, you know, it, it's nice to be reminded sometimes. I, I hope people take away a fairly positive message, even from Genghis Khan. Um, although he was very, very unusual. Um, it, it was, and very hard to write from the beginning, because I was, I was dealing with Julius Caesar uh, first, and he had an idea of culture and civilization. And he thought, you know, when he went into Gaul and to Britain and uh, smashed their armies, that he was bringing them something good, that he was bringing them, you know, the light of Rome. Genghis Khan did not think that. Uh, he didn't care about cities or civilization. Uh, he had no interest whatsoever in bringing a Mongol culture to the world. As far as he was concerned, and honestly this is the best I've been able to find, is that he thought that if a man is young and strong and has friends who have weapons, there is no better way to spend your life than killing your enemies. It is fun and it uh, is a, a good use of your talents. And I know that, set, that makes him sound very superficial, but actually, <laughs> but he's you, almost unique uh, in, in history because everyone else was building empires. Um, you know, you, whoever it is, Alexander the Great, Napoleon, they had a concept of civilization. Genghis Khan didn't care about any of that. And as far as I can tell, he didn't care about being remembered afterwards. You know, you cannot think of any other conqueror who didn't build statues uh, and names. I mean, how many cities are named Alexander? or Alexandria, or you know, whatever the combination is. I mean, most of them thought thousands of years ahead. And Genghis Khan was content to be buried in an unknown grave in a, in a mountain that no one knows where it is, somewhere in Mongolia. And, um, and he wasn't even particularly worried about which son became Khan. He disinherited two of them. Um, so the third son became Khan, but that was his problem. You know, he had to survive. It wasn't going to be something that Genghis Khan worried about because that's another man's life. And honestly, it's such a unique perspective. It's, it's sort of, uh, it is refreshing or interesting. I should say interesting. It's, uh, you know, it's not so much refreshing. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, I hope people take that kind of thing away from the books because they, they fascinate, they fascinate me. When I was a kid, I mean, the Harry Potter thing is, you almost can't compare it to anything because it's just, it's so far above everything else. But, I read a lot of fantasy when I was a kid, but one of them, if, if there is such a list, would have to be the boy with secret powers. The boy who discovers he can use magic, or that he is a prince, or you know doesn't know it, or that, I don't know. I mean, Raymond Feist's uh, magician is exactly the same story. So to some extent, when I started to read Harry Potter, I found that I had read this sort of thing before. It is very, very well done. It's a, you know, beautifully written and it's very clever. Um, but for me, it wasn't the world-shattering sort of, oh my goodness, what an incredible book, because I have read Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card, and I have, you know, I've, I've read dozens and dozens of books with exactly this thing. It is something that appeals to uh, boys in particular, because it's the, 
It's the feeling that you are special, that there's something inside you which is going to make you powerful. Whether Spider-Man is exactly the same thing. Superman is exactly the same story. I think most boys have, at some point, you know, wish they could click their fingers and be a karate grandmaster or, some, or something like that. You know, it's, oh, oh, I may, it might be just me, I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting sort of thing. Vampires I can't quite explain because, you know, <laughs> I mean, I know there are loads of theories, and there are some weird sort of slightly sexual theories about, you know, how the how vampires penetrate and all that. And I'm not even going to go into that because it doesn't appeal to me. But then that would make sense. Um, you know, why girls like vampires and boys like zombies? I don't, I don't quite understand. Um, the, the romance of being assaulted in your bedroom is never. Uh, uh, <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't appeal to me at all. Uh, you know, these things do come in sort of fashions. Uh, it, it is strange how these, these things come. I mean, the, the, the Da Vinci Code came out, and then there was a rash of books called things like the Michelangelo Code. Uh, they didn't call it that, but you know, it was the, the Templar Legacy, all, all of these business. Suddenly people were fascinated by uh, uh, mysteries in history. Mysteries in history. Um, you know, that's not such a bad thing. I've, I've, actually, after the Dangerous book came out, there were an awful lot of books uh, that came out following the, the sort of idea. And I couldn't exactly complain because I wasn't the first person to think I should put a book together of all of the activities for children. Um, it was partly because it hadn't been done for a while that I wanted to do it. And I think, honestly, that that's what J.K. Rowling did. It hadn't been done for a while. Um, I mean, her genius is that she managed to appeal to boys and girls, old and young.